Hello, my lovelies. I'm Rain, and welcome to this episode of the Divination Death Witch Podcast. I wanted to do an episode about something paranormal, and as I was trying to decide what I wanted to talk about when I began to feel like the universe was not so subtly hinting at what the topic should be. Now, I don't know that this story is paranormal, but it is definitely weird. This story involves what some call Irish eyes, which means that someone can see spirits. Now, I haven't heard this term used in this particular context in a very long time, so I don't know if it's still used that way, but when I was younger, if someone had Irish eyes, it meant that they were a medium or in some way they were able to see ghosts and other spirits. As I said, I was trying to think of a paranormal topic for this episode, and I was doom scrolling on TikTok when I came across one that mentioned Irish eyes. Now, I didn't get to see what the TikTok was actually talking about. I started watching it, and the first few seconds had them saying the phrase Irish eyes several times, but I got pulled away from my phone, and by the time I got back to it, TikTok had refreshed my FYP And so I have no idea if it was about Irish eyes in the terms of seeing spirits or if it was about something else entirely. But this jogged a memory of something that happened to me back in 2000. And I started thinking maybe I should talk about it on here. I still wasn't sold on the idea though. I mean, this is a story that I'm not even sure is really paranormal, but it is interesting. Maybe a message from spirit and not necessarily paranormal, but someone consider a message from spirit paranormal. So I'll let you decide ultimately. At the time I'm putting this episode together, I sat down to start writing out my thoughts, and I'm still questioning if this is really worth telling on here. I decide I want to turn on some music, and I've been listening to a playlist on Spotify called Fairy Rap. And I haven't listened to the whole playlist yet at this point. I'm a little tongue-tied today, pardon me. But when I turned it on, I wanted to start from the song that I was listening to last. And that song's title, maybe you can guess, the song was Irish Eyes by Rose Betts. Okay, spirit, we're going to do it your way, I guess, and I'll tell this story. I'm interested to see what all of you make of these events. It was the spring semester of 2000, and I had taken an English class that was specifically on interpreting Shakespeare's plays. We covered three, and I want to say they were Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and The Taming of the Shrew, but this was 24 years ago. I've taken a lot of English classes, and I've read and seen a lot of the Bard's plays, so... I'm not 100% that those were the three plays that we covered. Near the beginning of the semester, but after the time when students were normally allowed to make schedule changes to add a class, a woman began attending our class. I don't know if it was ever outright stated or if it was just implied But we were all under the impression that she was auditing the class and not taking it for credit, and that's why she was allowed into the class late. There were, I don't want to say some odd things, but just some ways this woman stood out. For context, we didn't have a local Mormon population. We did have a local Orthodox Mennonite population, but during high school and into the beginning of my being in college, I worked at a Mennonite retreat, and I was very, to this day, familiar with their dress code and rules, etc. This woman dressed in a certain way that you could say was Mennonite and Mormon-inspired or adjacent, but wasn't 
actually the way that members of those groups are supposed to dress. I don't want to get into getting hung up on the specific details about why it was or wasn't those specific dress codes, so I'm not going to tear it apart piece by piece just for time's sake. But to give you a general description of this woman, she always wore a dress and it was kind of like overalls, but a dress. Some people call them jumpers. Much of the time it was denim, but sometimes she'd wear other materials, sometimes dark shades, sometimes lighter shades. Sometimes her top under the dress was short-sleeved. Sometimes it was long-sleeved. Sometimes it had a pattern. Sometimes it didn't. If I had to guess her age, I'd say it was mid-40s to early 50s. She had very long hair. And I only know this because we were discussing hair in one class and she said about the length of her hair and what she went through to wash it. She didn't braid it or anything like that. She sort of swirled it all up on top of her head and then covered it with this head covering similar to what the Orthodox Mennonites wear, but her head covering didn't fit the Mennonite rules for their head covering. And I've only seen Mormon women wear head coverings in like the extreme Warren Jeffs type sex, and hers didn't match that either. Also, her dresses would have been considered too short for the Mennonites who wore head coverings, the Orthodox Mennonites. And from what I've seen, probably for the Mormon sex as well that wear the head coverings, I can't 100% with that. I'm much more familiar with Mennonite culture. And also, I just want to rule out that we did not have any Amish communities and her dress absolutely 100% did not fit any of the Amish community rules for women's clothing. During the semester, she did make a couple of vague references to growing up in a not-so-common religion, and we got the impression her manner of dress was a holdover from that, and through context clues, we suspected she had escaped a sort of cult. She didn't have a husband, but we did know that she had adult children, and I want to say that it was two adult females. From the way she talked about her hair care and a few other things, we all suspected that she lived somewhere without running water or electric. But we also got the impression this was a choice she made. Off-grid living wasn't as big back then, but it was a thing. And you also have to remember that I grew up in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, where some people still lived off the land. She was a very nice woman, very motherly, and she always gave wonderful contributions to the class discussions. Clearly, this woman was educated. Whether that was self-educated or if she had formal education, I couldn't say, but she was educated. We all liked her and we never excluded her or treated her poorly for being different, but there was no denying that there was something different about her. The final project for the class was the biggest chunk of our grade, and it required us to do some sort of analysis of one of Shakespeare's plays that we hadn't covered in class. I had started my journey into paganism a couple of years prior to this, and my project was Pagan Symbolism in Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Part of our final project meant that we had to have something physical to show the class in addition to presenting our paper. I don't remember what the rules for this were, but I made fairy cakes for the class and I decorated a broom. I had also brought grape juice for everyone to wash the fairy cakes down with. Just a note, because I think this is kind of important, this woman was working on a project just like the rest of us. Even though we were all fairly certain she was auditing the class instead of taking it for credit. We were presenting over the course of about two weeks, I want to say. 
or that was the, the scheduled block of time for presentations because this class was packed. It was considered an easy A for anyone who was into lit or writing because as long as Dr. K saw that you put genuine effort into your final project, you'd get a good grade in the class. At the time I gave my presentation, our interestingly dressed possible escapee from a cult classmate had not yet presented. Between the broom, my backpack, the travel container I had to transport the fairy cakes in, and the leftover grape juice and disposable cups, I had a lot to carry back to my car. I wasn't really worried about it, as Dr. K said she'd leave the room open and unlocked so that I could make a couple of trips with everything. Said student offered to grab a couple of things and walk with me to my car so that I could get it done in one trip. Another note for context, this was at the time in my life where very few people knew that I saw and interacted with spirits. I, it was certainly not something I had or would have discussed in class. Also, yes, I do have Irish ancestors in case anyone wonders that because of the phrase Irish eyes being used. We're making chit chat about my presentation and the class and she walks with me to my car which was in the parking lot near one of the farther buildings on campus. I'm putting things in the trunk of my car and she says to me out of the blue, you have Irish eyes don't you? I was caught off guard and just simply said something like, what? And she said, you know what I mean. You've got the Irish eyes, don't you? All I could say in response to that was something like, I suppose I do. She gave me a knowing smile and turned and walked off. Like literally, there was no more conversation. She just turns and walks away. While I knew what Irish eyes were, at least in the context I had heard the phrase, um, it was something that was kind of frowned upon in that side of my family, not something one openly admitted to. And why did this woman ask me if I had them when we weren't even talking about spirits or ghosts or anything of the like? I was so confused. I never saw the woman again. She never came back to class and she never presented her final project. At one point, we as a class asked Dr. K if the woman was okay, if something had happened because she didn't come back to class and she didn't present her final project. Dr. K just went on with something else in class and she just kept talking about that like we hadn't even asked. 24 years later, and I still don't know what to make of that encounter. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm interested to hear your take on things. Back then, paganism wasn't as accepted as it is today. Not that it's universally accepted today, but I choose to end or chose at the time to end my presentation with a quote from Puck, and I feel like it's appropriate to end this episode the same way. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to book a private reading with me or one of the other services I offer, you can do so through my Etsy shop. You can find the link in the description box below. Until I see you again, my lovelies, blessings to you wherever your journey finds you.